So um, let's go. Let's get into it. It's it's nine thirteen. We've got one hour. Let's go. <laughs> um, um, there is I'm so almost... much shit we could focus on, and and I was really trying to get you to kind of hone in on a direction, right? And you're kind of pointing out there's there's so many different areas we could focus on had you had any more idea of where you wanted to start off um not really i I was thinking kind of like the best way would just be like see how a game goes and like you could just kind of be like okay that's a definite issue this is an issue like point out a few things that are like need to do or need to get fixed like as soon as possible and work work from there i guess or i don't know how really you do it but that's kind of what i was thinking cool um so just grab a replay. Let's choose. You said one of your matchups is way lower than your others, right? 44 Protoss is, yeah, that's, I mean, so that's the obvious starting point is let's focus on TVP first. So if you could just grab a recent TVP replay off the ladder, um, do watch with others. We're in a party, you're the party leader. So let's get straight on in there and I can start kind of passing some information. Um, thank you, Smallpox, Lunge a bit cheer, mate. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Is there much. a quick way to like, just view me versus Protoss, like in the replays. No, I once ate a bit of string and if you just click on them, up, you should I be should able to not. see the race matchup for each one. If you don't have that, you can always go to your observer and replay menu and click the display replay time info. I got you. you. Um, does it matter matches. if it's a win or loss? Uh, no, not at all. Okay, I'm just gonna go with the last one that I have then. Yeah, that's uh, first toss. Doesn't even matter if it's a three minute game doesn't matter it's like we're always gonna get info out of it and we can just bam, straight into the next one so just right click me and go promote to lobby host and um yeah so okay because uh, there's so many different things and, and we can kind of haphazardly go through and just point out things but the thing in starcraft is there's always infinite areas to focus on improving right so you do want to try and um you want to try and pursue that kind of mindset of making sure you're picking things to focus on because the thing is people are like ah one day i'll be good and you know i won't have to focus on having to pick one of the thousand things i'm bad at and it's like you talk to any pro player hey, and i can't hear anything you're saying the uh in-game audio is super super loud yeah, right now c- control s yeah just mute the mute the in-game can you hear me now Just mute your in-game audio. So whenever you're watching replays on eight times speed, just control S and turn off your in-game music as well. Is that better? Cool. So yeah, because it, it 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 it's there's a massive uh, increase in volume when you're fast forwarding replays. So very common to just control less whenever you're you're dealing, you know, with uh, watching replays. So, um, you want to try and yeah, basically uh, get that that uh, idea of picking where to focus on and where to improve. Um, and not being like, ah, oh, but I have all these other things to improve. Because that never ends. You can become the best player in the world and you will still have a thousand things to improve. You talk to any of the best pros, whenever you force them to actually go back and look at one of their games, even their winning tournament games, there's usually a fair bit of, um, depending on the player, disgust might be too strong a word. But for many of the players, it's like the appropriate word for the way they look at their, <laughs> their games. And you're like, oh, that was a fantastic win. And they're like, man, I fucked up so many things. Like... You know, there's always so many things you can focus on. So it's a lot about just choosing something to focus on and saying, hey, I'm going to get good at this. And this is something where as well, you know, I was really trying to push you in our email conversation to pick things that excite you as interesting points for you to say, hey, I'm going to get better at this specific area because it's it's inherently motivating, right? It's inherently something that you're going to get better at. And it's also because you've got so many directions, that's just a good way of picking. Oh, you know what? Let's get better at this thing because it'll be naturally satisfying because I'll feel fucking awesome when I can, you know, always queue liberators into people's bases while attacking the front, you know, just just mastering the art of the two-pronged attack or, uh, you know, it could be, uh, you know, I really want to just hit that three base max out right at this timing. For me, that giant, giant 2-2 two, two tank push is just the most powerful, awesome thing that I love doing. So, just kind of finding those sort of directions is is one thing I'd be pushing us to. So I'm going to write a little subheading here below your, your initial notes. 
in our document. And I'm going to start kind of writing lots of things in there as we go, of course. So pig's initial thoughts is what we'll write. And then we can kind of discuss all this. Um, so number one is I still really want to push you to do that as a way of directing your improvement. So choosing areas that are fucking cool um, to focus learning on. Another big part is right now you've made it to diamond, which is awesome, but you're playing the exact same style with a rather limited unit set and the exact same opening build order progression in all three matchups. And that's something where normally around high platinum, so you know, low diamond, high platinum is pretty similar to where you are. It's a spot where I'm like, okay, we should always like definitely be learning different builds for each matchup because if we don't diversify now, we might just push ourselves so deep down the ladder with like only really one build that we know how to do. And the game will inevitably get a bit like stale and stuff. Now, I'm not saying we want to learn three drastically different build orders completely new, but we could start by say picking TVP since it's your weakest matchup and saying, okay, let's change this build order and it could still be the same opening but maybe we add some opening pressure differences maybe we build in oh an early marine drop or a widow mine drop or you know whatever we feel like and maybe we go in a similar path but maybe we say oh you know what in the current meta people are all massing zealots so i'm gonna go widow mines instead of siege tanks you know that's just an example obviously we'll, we'll kind of see but that idea of branching into different styles is something i think is probably inevitable and something we're probably at the point where we want to start doing that. What, what do you reckon? I mean, that all sounds fantastic. Yeah. All right. So branching into different builds for each matchup is something you want to start doing. Um, beyond that, if we think about issues, you've talked about kind of tunnel visioning about macro. I mean, th there's ways we can deal with that by mapping out different situations, understanding what we should be focusing on. There's always prioritization. It's totally natural for us to float money. Um, for a lot of players, they get way too obsessed with like looking at symptoms, I guess, where it's like, oh, I have a thousand minerals. Oh, I'm so bad. And it's like, well, you're just microing a drop in their main, a liberator in their natural for 30 seconds and you killed a fuck ton of workers. You should pat yourself on the back. You know, if you float a thousand minerals, that's totally natural. If there's nothing going on in the game, you're just doing your build, it's five minutes in, you've got a thousand minerals, there's no interaction. That's a different story because there's no reason for us to have a thousand minerals, right? You know, it's like, oh, okay, like this is pretty early in the game. You're on like one barracks, one factory, one starport production. That's a, okay, let's try and figure that out. But a lot of people with their replay analysis, um, most people suck at analyzing replays and 90% of what they learn to do is just kind of point at, oh, I'm supply blocked at this time. I got to not get supply blocked more, which doesn't solve the problem at all because when you're playing a game, you're focusing on a thousand different things. Telling yourself to not get supply blocked in a replay does literally nothing. Same thing. Ah, oh, I keep tunnel visioning. Nah, I got to stop doing that. Doesn't achieve anything. What you need to do, let's say, uh, you know, Let's, let's find a point in this game where we float some money. Um, and, and let's kind of talk about that just briefly while we're on it. My man. Uh, one sec. Sorry. Thank you very much, Uzi, for the sub. And let me turn off those. Oh, gifting a sub, in fact. Um, but double sound alerts. Let me turn that off. No worries. Cool. So floating resources and stuff, uh, I think that was probably around one of your attacks. I'm sure that was naturally happening. <clears throat> Um, floating resources slash tunnel vision. If you're going to look at those as a, a, an issue, I want you to backtrack to the previous minute of the replay and really watch what you were focusing on. And if you think there's things that could be better, map them out exactly. Like something you've, you might've seen me do in my coaching is write out exact dot points of like, oh, okay, I drop hit the main um or a liberator sieged up what is the exact order of operations of dealing with that not just oh i should have not done that you know i should have just not lost my units but okay i needed to number one pull my scvs away number two grab units from the rally point cue them using shift to go around the liberator zone those marines and then kill the liberator then you know return doing a round of macro because they've been distracted for a little bit and then go back to managing my army on the front or you know something like that but the idea is adding an exceptional level of detail with that sort of stuff or with other things if it's like a supply block it's actually building triggers it's going well i get supply blocked here 
specifically because he harassed me with something I wasn't used to dealing with. I was kind of running around chasing my tail, trying to deal with that for a while. And then I just completely forgot about depots until like 40 seconds later when I was trying to start upgrades. And I went, oh shit, I've been supply blocked this whole time and I didn't even notice. And you can look at a situation like that and you can kind of build that and you can say, okay, I need to build a sort of trigger, right? Where if I'm getting supply blocked due to pressure, you kind of look at that and you say, it's caused by distraction and losing your way, right? So the solution to that is always after a crazy situation settles to do a full macro cycle. And what is the core of that? It's always SCV plus mule production, number one. Unit production, number two. And then depots, number three. And those are the three fundamental things that no matter what crazy situation you're in, those are things that are constants. So no matter what, right? If you do a pressure, those are the first things you do when you bounce home. At this point, you're like, oh, okay, my attack's cleaned up. Go home. It should be SCVs, mules, build some more Marines, build a tank, build a medevac, drop a depot. In this case, we can skip the depot because we just lost a giant army and we've got lots of free supply. But if we look at the document, you can see where I've written that, right? I can see. Hang on one second. When I'm typing uh, or when I do my push to talk, I think it leaves little asterisks all over the uh, screen. Um, I could see initially where you wrote uh, Pig's Thoughts, but I haven't clicked on that. Yep. If you see down here where I'm highlighting right now. Yeah, I can see it now. I didn't yeah. know it was like a little subtext. Yeah, and obviously this is just a very basic way of writing it, but it, it, whenever you, that's the way you want to try to program things in whenever you find an issue, right? Is you want to try to say, okay, here's an, here's an issue. Just looking at that base symptom, that first level, useless. You want to try and find a cause or look at the context in which it happens, right? So it's like issue, context, and then we want to start trying to formulate a solution from that, right? And we want to try to add lots and lots of details to how that happens. Now that of course can be done on a very basic level, but the idea there is just the tunnel vision on things that repeat a lot, right? You're not going to be able to do this for every single issue, but for some things it will definitely happen. So anyways, um, this is just a very quick overview of the main things you touched on in your problem, in, in, in your in your kind of uh, notes. But essentially, we need to just pick a direction in terms of what we'd like to focus on. So I think starting with a new TVP build variation to make that something that we're actually excited to do and is going to variate, right? Because right now, we are essentially just doing, um, what is it? It's just a very safe kind of barracks expand with a reaper into just tanks, right? Tanks, marines, and just kind of getting some Vikings and just kind of chilling, right? Uh, yeah, it's trying to build up my bio army and tanks as much as possible. Cool. Well, this is a very specific replay, so we might as well talk about this first of all. So, <clears throat> Hang on hands. two seconds. I have a door. Uh, someone just knocked. No worries. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out, guys. Uh, big thanks. Uzi gifted that sub to Connor before. Thank you very much, guys. Oh, we're not going to need anyone to play games today, I don't think, Kill Kenny. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Hey, no worries, man. Um, So early cannon defense, just while it's in front of us. If you're going to pull SCVs like that, I don't think your SCV pool did anything here, did it? Let's see. Because you you end up hitting some pylons, but then you just lose SCVs. So, yeah. You didn't really achieve anything by doing that at all, right? No, I just lost SCVs. It's like, I guess you stopped him from like building gateways on the front and stuff behind it. But like, yeah, we didn't really do anything. So, I think it's either wall off or pull SCVs kind of thing. Like just, just choose one as your focus. And if you pull SCVs, pull more and focus, you know, and, and basically, and micro your ass off, right? The problem is you are focusing in two different directions, um, which is kind of the worst thing. So if we pull, let's see, when, when did we first see this? Let me just kind of very quickly go through exactly what I would do there. Do, 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 do. Okay. 
Whoa. I think his forge is a little late. That's okay. And we walled off because we saw the forge. Okay. And then, yeah, you, you walled him out, which I guess you could still do if you want to. But we should have pulled way more SCVs. And let's see what we did. So we attacked the probe. How did he we... get away from me there? Because I felt like I had him surrounded. Oh, you don't know about mineral walking? No, I hear the term, but I don't know how to do it. Oh shit, yeah. Okay, awesome, dude. Uh, you, if you click on minerals, notice how it look at like look at look at uh, his worker line right now. If you go up, look at his base. Notice the workers just phase through each other. None of them block each other at all. So whenever a unit is mining from an assimilator, uh, mineral or minerals on any base, they just lose all collision size. So they they don't create they don't occupy space only when they're not mining so if they've been told to hold position move command or attack a target then they actually occupy space so what your opponent did there is he was just like oh shit i'm surrounded and then you're gonna see he's gonna select he just, that probe and just click on those minerals on your natural and it'll just phase right through well that's kind of op thanks for uh, explaining that <laughs> actually did he oh yeah he did he did you can see he clicked on this uh, bottom right mineral patch so you're going to see he's clicking, he's clicking, and it's trapped, and then he clicks on the mineral patch. You can see the little green border if you select the probe. So you can actually see where people click in replays, which is great. And then the next one comes in, and it also mineral walks out to safety. So anyways, you would leave one or two SCVs attacking each probe. The rest would attack the pylon. And you'd look at this scenario, and what I'd do is I'd just kind of go, hey, where is the scary spot where he could actually wall in a cannon? And that's obviously to the right, because you can imagine if that cannon goes down, he could put a gateway right above that and then a pylon to the right of that cannon. And it's completely walled in. And that's always the scary thing, right? And they could technically do it in a few different ways. It's very hard for them to get that off if you've got SCVs simply attacking their probes. But uh, yeah, like I said, two attacking each probe and I would have pulled almost every other SCV down there as well, just making sure I shut it down. Why do I feel safe to do that? You've seen a second probe and a pylon finish. These are two very big signs they're committing to a cannon rush. And you've got to remember, put this in context, he's got fucking nothing behind it, right? So even if you waste a ton of mining time and he gets a slight probe lead, he hasn't started a gateway. He needs a gateway to start before he can start a cyber core, cyber core to finish before he can build any units that actually fight properly other than shitty zealots and build any tech, which is scary. So you can pull a ridiculous number of units and just be ahead. And once you get a Marine or two out, once you kill the probes, it's basically shut down. And if he gets a few cannons down, you want to split about three SCVs to attack each cannon. If they've already got a bit of build time on them, maybe more than that. But usually if you just get about three SCVs attacking each cannon, and it's all just about splitting your SCVs with boxing, right? So what I would have already done is these SCVs on the low ground would be on a hotkey. But as soon as I pulled those, I probably would have pulled even more because you even spotted the forge. But if I, if I didn't see a forge, I just saw a probe coming in and building a pylon, but I wasn't sure if it was real or not, I would have the other like seven or eight SCVs in my main on another control group ready. So as soon as that pylon finishes and I see him going for a cannon or whatever, I'm like, oh, fuck, pull the rest down as well. You know, A, move those down. And then it's just a lot of box these two SCVs, attack a probe. Box these two SCVs, attack a probe. Box these other three SCVs, tell them to go attack the cannon. Box another three SCVs, tell them to go around and attack another cannon to get surface area. And the only time we really want to prioritize pylons over cannons is in a situation where you can't get to the cannon and it's the only way to deal with it is to depower it. If you have enough SCVs, of course, you just split them up and attack a bit of everything. But because cannons have 100 less total hit points than a pylon, they are an easier target. And we want to make sure we never attack move because if you do that, they can attack move their probe. It will become a threat and your SCVs will go, oh, let's go fight that. And then the probe can just run around and all the SCVs will chase it rather than attacking the cannon. So it's all a lot of manually right-clicking or, or a left-clicking on the probes, on the cannons, trying to get the right angle, all that sort of stuff. Gotcha, no air move. No air move. Um, yeah. Have you ever watched my cannons videos with printf? Um, I can't say for certain. Well, I'll give you the whole links. Probably just watch the PPT ones. If you start struggling with cannon rush, it's just... Do, 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 do. Uh, oh, let me paste without formatting. There we go. So that's just linked up now. That's cool. Um, in your thing. So anyway, if we want to do a TVP build variation, because I mean, there's there's so much we can talk about today, but let's try and get into some concrete stuff. 
Uh, let's let's first of all open up another TVP replay. Let's hop out of there just so we have something to look at. Um, <clears throat> I mean, looking at your game plan, your your build order write up was also a little bit messy. So something that you could use is just improving your notation, trying to use like a dot point list and stuff um, that's like chronological. Have you ever looked at any of my build write ups on Spawning Tool? Uh, I want to say I have, but um, not recently. No worries. Just right-click me, make me the lobby host. We've got fake Massa as our opponent. I like it. Um, so let me let me just grab a opening. Okay, cool. So uh, I'll link this to you on Discord, mate, just as an example of notation for build orders. Because you don't want to be staring at a build order right up over and over, but you want to be able to go back and very easily read it and kind of pass the information and just double check you're actually doing it correctly. Periodically, it's good to go back because we always fall into bad habits inevitably and we, we, we naturally veer away from doing our build order because we just start making little weird adjustments over time because, oh, I got killed by this thing. So then you make this little adjustment. And sometimes for many people, a build kind of morphs. So you'll notice... <clears throat> with that build notation, just the write-up. So don't go look at the build order with all the timestamps. That's fucking useless, right? So you've got the link open, yeah? Yeah, I just opened it. Cool. Yeah, if you scroll down, you see all the timestamps, which is just passed by the salt encoding, where it has supply count timer. It's like 14, 17 seconds supply depot, 15, 41 second barracks, et cetera, et cetera. That's, that's really bad. Don't we don't want to use that, right? Because that's just impossible for our brain to remember. It's literally like, oh, at three minutes and two seconds, build two Marines. Um, I get a lot of people I coach who copy paste me one of those. And I go, oh, fuck no. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you don't, I'm like, you don't actually do this. No one does this. No one can remember any of that. So what you wrote to me made a lot more sense. You're like, I do this, then I do this, then I do this. So your, yours was way better. You're, you're far ahead in terms of like the organization of that. You're like, okay, then my tech lab does this and my stuff, blah, 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 blah. If you look at my build write up, so you scroll up there, you'll see how it's all chronological and it starts off with supply counts, right? Like 14 depots, 16 racks. But you're going to notice there's indentations for what the barracks does in order. So that that's for helping you know how add on swapping works, right? Because otherwise, it's very easy to look at a builder and go, wait, what's the barracks doing at this point? I can't remember. What's the factory doing at this point? I can't remember because I've swapped add-ons around and I can't remember what's doing what. So this indentation allows you to remember exactly uh, what that structure should be doing in what order, right? You can see if you scroll down, it's the same for the factory. It has, okay, so the factory will build a tech lab, then a cyclone. It'll then swap off and build another tech lab and then it'll produce tanks. And same below for the starport. So for my first three production facilities, I make sure they have those indentations just so that I can easily remember the exact order of what they do. And obviously we can keep that a bit simpler if we don't want to make the builds as overly complicated. And um, I'm definitely a big fan of, of that. I think one of the worst things people do is they build a second barracks and then they try to swap it on an add-on. They build a third barracks, they try to swap it on an add-on. They build a second factory, they try to swap it on an add-on. And it's like, First three buildings, do some nice add-on swapping. Any good build does that. But at a certain point, it's better to just build four barracks at once, come back 40 seconds later when they finish building, throw two tech labs and two reactors down, right? Like you just batch it up because otherwise you're just drowning yourself in like extra macro duties, which you're inevitably going to forget and make mistakes on. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I kind of do that with the exception of not really uh, swapping the first uh, first few buildings. You just leave them, don't you? Because you get two extra barracks with tech labs in your build order, I remember, you you noted. So then you can just start stim and shields at the same time to make up for the fact that your stim's a little later, right? Generally. I mean, I don't know if it's it's later or if it's early or late. I don't really know like what I'm really talking about. Most bio one 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 builds would swap the like their first barracks onto a tech lab a little bit earlier and start the stim and then the shields from that. Because like against Terran and against Zerg, normally you want mostly Marines in the early game, only going Marauders later on. Against Terran, not at all, um, unless you're playing against Mech. Whereas against Protoss, you want to go much more Marauder heavy. So usually against Protoss, you'd have like three tech labs, two reactors. So against Protoss, it's more normal to get two tech labs at the same time and then start both upgrades and get the Marauder production going. 
But against Zerg and Terran, you'll find most pro build orders are just get that barracks off the reactor onto a tech lab a bit earlier so that it can go start stim and then start shields after that. And obviously, because you're doing one after the other, it's a bloody giant delay. It takes a long time to get both upgrades, um, which which takes a little bit. But uh, anyways, so just a, a habit is like write out your build like that. Continuing with the build, so, so still looking at that build uh, right up, scroll down to where it says transition. Yep, double eBay, four racks, reactors. Yeah, notice that that is very loose. The start of the build is like, ah, right at four minutes, you should have 400 minerals for a third CC. Like earlier, it's 20, 21 supply bunker at the natural. At exactly 150 minerals and 100 gas, start your factory. Here, it's just a general order. And that's because you're in the mid game. You've got so much money rolling in. There's more things going on. They could be harassing you. You could be harassing them. So it's naturally going to be more, let's still have a structure that is repeatable. So we do things in the same order so that this is very important. Because if you don't do this, you don't get timing sense. You don't get good instincts because every game is different. Sometimes your double upgrades are done at this time. Sometimes they're a minute later because you actually went your Ebays way later, right? You just forgot to get your Ebays. You did it in a different order. So I noticed in your write-up, you did a, a good write-up up to a certain point, third CC, blah, blah, blah. And then it just stopped from there. And you're like, yeah, I try to kind of counter their units to some extent and feel out what they're doing. And this is a big thing that I, I kind of harp on about with every Terran that I coach is I'm like, no, you need a write-up like what I just had there, that order. What is your standard order? And there could be a good reason for you changing it, but don't fall into the trap of going, oh, no, no, like I got to react to certain things. So I'm going to be reactive. So I don't have a set way of doing it. I react to what I see. And I go, no, no, that's just an excuse for bad play. Because what you want is in the absence of information, you have a standard thing, which is like the one you're most comfortable with that you feel is most solid in most situations, right? So say it's that double eBay, four barracks, reactors, armory, second factory, blah, blah, blah. Maybe in a specific scenario, you go, oh, well, they're going um, sky toss. So I want to get an extra starport up earlier and I'll shuffle the build order because there's a very clear tell from my opponent and reaction from me. But in the absence of that, and let's face it, a lot of the time, the map looks like it does right here in this game. We don't know what the fuck's going on, right? <laughs> you know, you're not scouting at every moment of the game. We don't always know what our opponent's doing. He could have a corner base up. We don't know. That's just the way StarCraft is. So we want to always have a baseline, like a default. And then you can specifically be like, oh, in this situation, this is the exact tell and this is the exact response. But the important thing is having a defined progression of all your buildings right up to full three base production which usually means up to six seven or eight barracks up to second factory or even third factory or second or third starport and having that as a standard line where you're like yeah i like to go three factory tank as my standard or i like to go three starport liberator or two starport liberator with range or something like that and that's really important and this is something i want you to do for all of your builds because almost every terran i coach i find does not have that well defined and they will often throw giant leads because they macro up to a big work account and then their production just stalls on two base production, essentially. It's just five barracks, a factory, a starport, and it never evolves from there. Or if it does, it's a few more barracks, but they're very late in the game and it's still just bio or bio ghost, which is an incredibly advanced composition. And we all love to watch Hero Marine and our favorite pros micro it like a god but we absolutely throw games with it repeatedly by walking into Storms, Disruptors, and Banelings. So we want to make sure usually we have a lot of tanks or a lot of libs, some sort of siege unit and some explosion in that siege unit production because there's nothing sadder than a five-base Terran who has one factory, loses all their tanks in one fight, and then is like, well, I guess I'm just playing Marine Marauder for another eight minutes until I get a decent siege tank count back up. That sounds like most of my games, actually. That's that's the pain, man. That's the pain. You're like, oh, I think I'm doing really well. You look at the replay, you're like, up 40 supply, but that advantage is not so good, right? When you don't have actual siege units to, to leverage a push. That kind of forces you down a line of multi-dropping and multitasking, which is not everyone's piece of cake. So um, yeah, I guess that's like a little bit of homework is I really want you to make sure you map out your transition for every matchup, okay? So that's something which will, will really help you in the long run. So map out your transition in each matchup with exact standard production for three base plus and make sure your uh, 
growing your siege unit count. So you can actually win frontal fights. Because looking at the way you're fighting, you're a very frontal fighting player. Um, what do you prefer to focus on more? More frontal fighting power as the absolute focus, the end all, the be all, as one big killing punch that everything rests on? Or a bit of that with a bit of harassment mixed in? Or non-stop multi-prong kind of like as the way of finishing the game is always have a split army attacking two sides and do a bit more of uh hit and run tactics what do you feel is your jam so i like to yeah. siege up outside their base and then as soon as i send in like a tiny little attack just to get their attention normally i'll send in a uh, at least one medvac full of you know normally just marines but in this case and a lot of uh, coaching video stuff so i watch it's like stop doing drops like you're not good enough to do that so i've kind of steered away from doing that recently okay yeah i mean i think drops are great it's just as long as we are focusing on it i think i think it's it totally comes down to what we want to focus on so the thing is if you enjoy the drops that's great and i think the idea of just queuing a drop into their main or a liberator um and that also can be great as a way of getting across the map is like you have a drop hit and stim into their base as your army moves out because it allows you to get across the map a lot better if that makes sense right like yeah, it, it does. allows you to just get over there because how many times do we lose games from getting ambushed far too many i would bet um <laughs> definitely so okay cool um so honestly for you it's it's it, w w what would you rather focus on more frontal pushing power or or the other one and this is not about what people have told you it's about what you think is fucking cooler and what you would be more proud of pulling off i mean i just want to get a win so i mean probably um sieging up properly and then then doing some type of you know like you said um i guess shift clicking a lib into a mineral line or so mostly uh, frontal pushing but let's try to make it hard for our opponent by doing some very low apm multi-prong okay yeah i like it yeah. okay so mostly frontal pushing power and that's what we're going to make our spirit animal just remember Anytime you come to a decision in StarCraft, whether it's me asking you or more, more importantly, it should be you asking where it's, should I do this or this? If the answer is, I just want to win, that is how you lose, right? Because just confidently making a decision is how you're going to win. Confidently choosing, I want to fucking do this and I want to do it well, that's going to make you a better player. But winning in of itself is uh, usually not going to lead too much <laughs> because, you know, you, you just need to, like, it's, it's all about owning the the strategic direction and having that like excitement from it and that responsibility as well that you get because you're like i want to do this really well so even if you're like honestly you're like i i don't i mean they would both feel good i like you know you just got to pick one and go well i mean let's fucking let's do that right just just yeah, confidently I mean pick one in those scenarios then and if you end up saying, oh, this is actually a frustrating way to play, we can swap to the other focus, right? But just you'll, you'll inevitably find one that you'll say, you know what, over my experience, I get way more satisfaction out of just having strong frontal pushes. It feels more solid. Other players will say, no, like I love being able to multitask my opponent. That just feels better to me. Well, I mean, I like the idea of both. Um, the goal would be to get good in all those aspects. Um, but I mean, it's probably too much to try and like, do a whole bunch or learn 10 different things at once versus like you're saying like get good at this or get good at this yeah no that that's you're absolutely right i'm not saying we're ruling out the other thing it's just we can only tunnel vision on one thing at a time um have you ever heard the story of how picasso learned to paint uh, no i haven't he's fucking terrible he's like really bad and he kept going to like art classes and people were like just leave you suck and um <laughs> basically he he spent many many years just getting fucking obsessed he's like charcoal charcoal is on the only true artistic way of doing it i'm gonna become the best fucking charcoal drawer in the fucking world and he's like a fucking year and a half just drawing with charcoal and people still kind of thought he sucked and and then he was like actually you know what it's, it's watercolors it's watercolors and he basically just went through these periods of like fucking being obsessed with one thing and then another thing and then another thing and Eventually, he developed his own unique style and in a couple of years pumped out, you know, the most valuable paintings in the world, right? Um, but it was these, like, periods of tunnel visioning on one thing. You just being like, I'm going to get really good at this and then I'm going to get really good at this thing. And you just tried a lot of different things. But I think that's, like, really important in StarCraft because there's, like, a thousand different things you could focus on. So we're not locking ourselves in saying I'm never going to become a multi-drop player. We're just going to be like, let's get really fucking good at these frontal pushes, own that, and then we can reinvent ourselves. And... um 
why was Flash the, the emperor, the god of brew board? It's because he did that like every week. He was like, well, it's 10 dudes who are preparing builds to snipe me. So I'm going to completely change my style again. And because of that, he ended up with this like just immense variety of styles he could swap between. And he was unpredictable as well and couldn't be sniped. But it, but it all over time just built to this fact where he could mid game kind of swap from one style to another and uh, and do that. So yeah, it's, it's just important to tunnel vision on one. For now, we're going to do frontal pushing with a bit of drippy drop um, or liberator just to just to distract. But it's it's a bit more minimal. Now, a bit more minimal still is infinitely more than what you're doing because what? Let's look at your map. So where's our pressure in this game? Let's look at the harassment that comes out of the Kyvek side of the map. And I imagine this is the same in all matchups. Literally nothing until your first big frontal push, right? Yeah, there's generally not much. <laughs> that, My as hurt. a general rule, we're just going to be like, no, we should always be doing something. You can think of harassment as just scouting, almost even. Like, it doesn't need to do a crazy amount of damage. It just needs to force your opponent to interrupt what they're doing to be a bit worried, be a bit distracted, and to make sure we actually get a feeling for what's going on. Because otherwise there are games you hear, you're like, all right, time to move out with the bio tank. You get there and there's like six carriers and you're like, I probably sh I probably could have known about that if I actually did any scouting in this game or any pressure. And that's what harassment gives you. It gives you this, this feel for where the game's at. So we'll work in opening pressure a little bit. Um, number one, because players will be greedy as, as shit and we can't just let them do that. So in general, you always want to have some pressure in your build because it will punish a greedy player, but it will also force you to build units to a point where you can then scout aggression coming if you're hitting fast enough. Pull those units back quickly and build extra bunkers. You know, Give you warning to defense, but also the fact that you're building towards that aggressive poke means you're a little bit more prepared to defend incoming attacks right because those those aggressive units of yours can very easily be turned into a defensive force right yeah and if you're i mean in general like if you're attacking like that you're, you're scouting as well like it comes along with it hells yes um and that's it a lot of the times when you start doing opening pressure you'll just throw units away and that's fine that's part of the experience so front pushing with a little dropping uh some harassment slash pressure in each matchup in each each of your matchups uh in the openings um now part of that is you're going to need to learn learning to identify that's a lot of stuff let's go home verse there's fucking nothing here get <laughs> get to the mineral line kill everything <laughs> You know, there's sometimes you see people going for a poker pressure and they're like, because ah, ah, ah. the last the last game they played, the guy was massing Phoenix is like fucking ready to jump on their drop. And they're like, ah, ah. and they're playing a guy this time who's gone double robo, double a forge, fucking three base Colossus off one stalker and one adept, which Protoss players will do, dude. And they're like, the drops coming in and they're like, ah, they're all tentative. They kill two probes and they're like, ah, and then they just pick up and leave. And you're like, he had nothing. <laughs> you should have won the game with that. So it's it's going to take experience but it's just keep being aware you're going to be training yourself to go this situation good yes and this situation bad no um, yeah, i can tell that's already gotten way 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 better with me awesome well, that's fantastic and i mean you mentioned tunnel visioning as well so that's something else you're working on specifically by doing this because you're forcing more moments where you're picking when the interaction happens and that's going to be really important so queuing harassment whether it be a drop or whatever to a staging point which is somewhere not quite in their vision it's just maybe a screen or two back so if you were say loading up a drop you'd queue it to go here see where i'm signaling on the mini map i was gonna say that's pretty much where i send or where i would send it but i wouldn't i, I need to get better at like shift uh maybe to the corner of the map and then there i would just yeah. send it straight across yeah that would be bad no no you go like there and then here and then you just it's, it's on a control group usually but you just leave it there until you're ready to do it. And the idea is, before going in, or as it's going across the map, you do a full macro cycle. So you do extra macro. So you're like, I'm gonna be focusing on this marine drop up here and these Hellions running into this base at the same time. That could take 30, 40 seconds of micro, depending on how well things are going, right? I might see six stalkers on the edge of the base and just turn around and leave. But I could see no defenses to get in that mineral line like I was talking about. So if we think about it in those regards, you do extra macro. So you might be like, well, normally I only want to have one SCV queued at a time on a command center because day nine said queuing anymore is bad. No, we're going to queue three SCVs for each command center because that's 36 seconds of SCV build time, right? 
So if you're on two base, that's queuing six SCVs. Queue three SCVs per CC. Build extra units. And queue extra depots, right? And that is going to soften the blow of the fact that you know you are looking away from your base for that time, right? And then, as soon as you return from the pressure, no more, and that should be no more than 30 seconds micro. So when you're first starting out, you might be like, okay, we're going in with a drop, I have 20 seconds. And it's almost like a timer goes off in your head, you go in, you micro it, and then at a certain point, you just pick up and leave, or you just leave it there to do damage, do whatever it will. But at a certain point, if you're looking away from your base, you're getting diminishing returns because you've got a thousand minerals that needs to be spent. So unless you're in a mineral line killing tons of fucking probes at that moment, you're better off putting your APM at home. So a lot of people get good damage with the harassment, but then they keep staring at said harassment and microing it around for an extra two minutes while not spending their money. And it starts off great value and it becomes worse value, worse value, bad value, negative value, negative value, very negative value. Because once you're floating more and more money, once you're missing more and more depots and upgrades and mule drops and all that, you can imagine the cost of your actions not being spent at home drastically goes up. So that's something where you want to sign of impose a harassment restriction on yourself and say, no more than 30 seconds, jump home. And what do we do? Another full macro cycle and then continue our build, right? And that's something you'll be like, oh yeah, when I always look home for my marine drop, I'm going to make sure I start my second and third barracks because... Other, that I always have the money for those at that point. That's like in the build where they go down. So you can start building your build order and, and kind of chaining things together where you go, okay, at this certain point, I actually do this. Um, and that can be a really good way to develop your play as well. Uh, so question for you, if I queue up like a Marine drop into a mineral line, um, cause I'm always struggling with this. Like after like the first two or three Marines drop out, I want to stim them or if I do stim them, then I, after the remaining ones pop out, I kind of want to stim them as well. And a lot of times I'll just select them all and stim them. And it's like, I'm hurting like too many drugs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if you, I mean, if, if you just, just box, uh, box the units as they come out and stim plus move them forward a bit. So it's easy to box the next group and stim them all um sometimes even pros just wait for all eight to be out before stimming you know just for ease but if you're already in combat or you're already like spotted like if you're in the corner of the base no one's seen you there's no pylon or anything just wait for all eight to be out stim run in the mineral line right but otherwise you'll see people just kind of like the medevacs flying in and like box the, the first three marines stim them and then like the next few marines will come out and they'll box those and stim them sometimes even high level players will just select that the whole group and stim them all. And yes, it stims some of them a second time. Not the end of the world if you're if you're killing some probes. But technically, you will see pros, and we we saw this with like Maru and Beyond the other day. I saw I think he must have boxed five times. Cause he stimmed at least three or four separate, yeah, at least four separate times with his Marines unloading in a mineral line versus uh, like Serral or Dark or someone. Um, so that was kind of cool, but you know, that's he's got the mouse speed for it, so it depends I gotcha. how, so it's not how accurate that, you are. That big of a deal, I guess. Yeah, I wouldn't stress. Like, if you double stim your Marines, it happens, especially if they're not fighting anything. Often you just, oh, it's a queen and a drone line. Who cares how many hit points you take as long as you're doing as much damage? And then, oh, the lings are here, pick up and get the fuck out. Um, one second, mate. I really need to take a wee as well as turn on my air conditioning. So we're going to try and map out a build. Think about any opening pressure that we want to kind of add in here. What uh, flavor you would like, because we want to try and mix some sort of opening pressure in with your build order. So whether that be a drop, a liberator, a banshee, a hellion run by, whatever the fuck it is, try to think of what you'd like. And we're going to obviously change the build order. This is probably going to delay your third CC. It's definitely going to delay your tank production. But we're going to have more ways of aggressively scouting and seeing what's going on. And so we can start to obviously go, oh, okay, we'll have a reaction where we build tanks. So we're not going to be as blindly, ridiculously safe as you've been playing. It's going to give you diminishing returns, but we're going to have some cool pressure that's going to do massive damage some games and get you way ahead. So have a think about what sort of pressure you'd like to do in your opening against Protoss here. Um, and maybe what sort of pressure you could mix in against the other races as well. Maybe you want to start with a Hellion Banshee style or a Hellion Lib against Zerg. 
uh, maybe against Terran, you want to open up with a few Reapers and Hellions running across the map. Just have a think about those. And here in the document, I mean, you, you can type stuff. So let's say TVP, opening pressure, TVT and TVZ. So write down some things under each of those for some ideas of what you would most want to learn. And we can try and uh, kind of map out how those builds will change a little bit. Um, that's down on page, bottom of page three, top of page four in your document, okay? I'll be right back. Uh, it's, it's on the next page, yeah, there we go. All right, be right back, one sec. Finish that add-on. SCV ready. Mineral field depleted. SCV ready. This better be good. SCV ready. Alrighty then, I uh, coffee went straight through me today. Thank you for the patience there, mate. <laughs> I feel you. Mm. All right, so um, you've wrote, written TVP. You'd like the idea of cloaked banshees or liberators, um, and maybe a cyclone instead of a tank. Hmm. Okay, cyclone is interesting because it can actually pick off a unit or two if your opponent kind of pressures you. And it, it can, you know, it can it can be quite good for that. It's it's not particularly good in the follow-up. It's fantastic if they open Stargate, of course, right? Cyclone's amazing for that. It's not really a traditional pressure unit, though you could, like, stick it in a medevac or something like that. So, um, let's think about this. The most basic bitch way to harass early game. Um, <laughs> so, libs are the most basic bitch, right? We just, like, be like, oh, I'm going to build, like, one lib or maybe two libs off my starport as soon as it finishes like one at a time and then just like queue them into mineral lines because that is so frigging easy right to just queue a lib on the edge of the map and go siege a mineral line and it can have huge payoff like even without you looking at it once after that moment um but if it's happening in isolation the chances of it doing that big damage much lower at the same time it's not that big of an investment right um if we were to do uh say that or or the cloaked banshees um both of them kind of become more powerful if they combine with like hellions trying to poke like four hellions off a reacted factory um a cyclone instead of a tank at the start is not something i'm a big fan of because i'm not sure how we could kind of squeeze in it's a very gas heavy uh sort of thing so if we do that you wouldn't normally do that with say quick liberators or a quick banshee because you end up depleting your gas quite a lot um th yeah thoughts on on particularly banshee or lib what what unit you'd like to focus on probably the libs it's just going to be easier less apm 
Does it feel cooler? Just going for the easy route. Kind no, of. Dude, I, 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 honestly, man, everything is fun for me. Like, even <laughs> losing is, like, I, that's the thing. Like, even losing, yeah. like, I can spot stuff that's like, oh, that was really cool. That guy out macroed me and, like, complimenting him. Stuff like that's, like, it's totally okay if I go the easy route right now because it's all something all I'm right. learning. That's cool, man. All right. I like it. I like it. Um, like the cyclone, for example, that was actually more of a defense thing. Because um, say they go starport first, that's not something I normally scout. My uh, my reaper normally dies pretty early, mm -hmm. and um, if they do go oracle, like I'm giving up at least six or seven uh, SCVs because I'm normally not like, oh, let me pull those. They just die. She yeah, that's well, that's definitely not good. But uh, <laughs> I think if we're building our marines kind of consistently, we should be able to like respond to that as needed. Um, just building a blind cyclone to counter something that sometimes happens is like not my fave. I think just improving with how we use our reaper and, and going, oh, you know what, this player built a few adepts or something, um, or we actually saw the stargate. Either one of those is like, okay, I will, you know, prepare for the the oracle in this scenario i will build the cyclone as a reaction so i think mapping that out or as a, a specific reaction would be a better way of doing it but um so you said libs right okay cool so doing some lib harass so so a way we could change your opening if we look at it is we do need to get your starport straight away so like if we look at your build order right now you do get a factory you were thinking about a second gas but then you didn't go for it is that normal um what i try to do is i try to look how many workers i have and once i have 19 that's when i'll start my uh my second gas normally or actually it's totally wrong as soon as my starport finishes when i start my second gas in this case it was a command center and then a uh, second gas yeah because that command center that doesn't normally go down there does it no no i actually do factory command center starport is how i normally do it okay well this is yeah super random actually because the second gas goes down at this kind of random timing your starport never seems to build so this looks a little bit loose this game and you also, you mentioned you're obsessed with your depot wall and you have a problem with that. Yeah, just don't. So that's that's like the mindset problem of, well, sometimes people kill me on my natural and a wall keeps me alive. Therefore, I need to rush a wall every game. We're going to completely break that mindset because remember that's, I'm sitting in my corner of the map and I'm not scouting or doing anything. So I never know what's coming. So I need to play safe first everything. That's the Avilo mindset. It's the... I've I've got to be safe for everything. I never know what's happening. Well, that's 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 it. We, I, we gotta we gotta use that as motivation to get out of it. Ew, if, if that motivates like you it. to break that habit, then break the habit because it it, it really is such a, a restrictive way to play StarCraft because it's the the game is the boogeyman. You don't you never know what's coming. There's a monster under the bed, and it's always whatever the thing that happens to be happening lately. And then you'll sometimes get a meta where there's just a lot of different builds coming out, like when a new patch hits or something. And you're like, fuck, is, is it Oracle? Is it Void Rays? Is it Zealot Bust on my natural? Do I need a wall? Do I need turrets? And it's like, that's just not how we play StarCraft, right? We, we can't get... You've been doing a lot of solid things. You've been building Tank Bunker, most strong defensive comp, building up into upgrades, lining them up, making a big tank push hot, uh, happen off solid macro fundamentals. So you've focused well on your macro fundamentals, number one. Very generic safety, number two. And then pushing at a moment when your upgrades line up and your army and that defensive macro is turning into a big force. This is a great way of focusing on your fundamentals that you've done. So I want to, I do want to take my hat off to you there and I say, cool, now let's take, you know, we've taken two steps forward. Let's take a step back. We expect to go back to platinum um, te temporarily, hopefully very temporarily, depending on how we go. But let's let's kind of, you know, change the build up a little bit and, and, and make it a little bit more of a... Uh, you know, forward-facing build order. So the thing is, the Cyclone idea fits well with what you're doing here. Ah, sometimes an Oracle will come, that counters my build, that's bad for me, therefore I need to make a Cyclone, cool. But we want to break that mindset. So let's get away from that idea completely and let's say, okay, let's do a more standard opening. So, so we're going to do just Lib, some Lib Harass, okay? And maybe, maybe Lib Harass, maybe a Medivac drop uh, as well to follow it up right just sending like eight marines across in a medevac that could be and then if the lib's still alive if you kept it alive you can pair them up lib goes in does some damage shit stalkers are coming unsiege it pull it back medevac goes in the main lib comes in the natural at the same time 45 seconds later does that make sense yeah i totally just deleted something on the left i was trying to click where i could uh hold my key and whatever the was below marine marauder medevac i just clicked the x on it's gone now my bad man 
No, that's all right. You can just control Z it. All right. He didn't break it. Yeah. <laughs> it's back. It's back. Thank you. <laughs> all good. All good. Now, Google Docs is a magical thing. Um, okay. So I can definitely do some libs. Um, the medvac drop. That'll be interesting. Uh, it's pretty basic. It's just unupgraded marines. If they have the defense, you just pull it out of there. But um, so it's a more standard one v one we one 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 opening is kind of the the idea there, right? So you're still doing a reaper opening. So that the only difference. So so what are the actual changes? Um, second gas goes down right after factory starts. Starport ASAP. It's obviously a third CC is delayed. That's 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 just part of what's going to happen, right? So factory would go down. Second gas would start now. Notice you're not building SCVs so you, and, and dropping mules for ages there. Huge mistake. Huge mistake. It's so important to be dropping mules the moment that orbital finishes. But notice you're opening, you're on 18 SCVs as well. So you've missed an SCV in your early game and you didn't make your orbital immediately. So now you're going to make your orbital. We should immediately be building SCVs and dropping mules. That should be really important that you do that every game. But you've got two SCVs chasing a probe and an SCV watching your gas. So what is this? This is us being... We've played against the cannon rush at some point recently, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what it is. But you SCV scouted and you saw his gateway. But you weren't living in the present game. You were living in the trauma of games past. You weren't living... Well, there's been... Yeah. There's been times where I see the gateway and everything looks normal, and then there's a forge that's built after it that I don't see in my initial scout. So that's kind of what's going through my mind. Yeah, that's that's a really rare specific scenario with a much later cannon rush that you don't need to worry about. So if that happens to you, it's really important you you pour over that replay and understand exactly what the build was. So in this game, when you scout with your SCV, you want to look at the very specifics. So check this shit out. Pylon, gate. Single gas geyser. So your SCV sees a gas. There is no way there's a forge. You've seen a gas as well as a gateway. If there's a forge, that's minerals only. They can't afford to be going gate, gas, and a forge. Okay, see, I didn't know that. That's yeah. good to know. Think about it from your opponent's point of view. So, so if you look at, like, the thing is, whenever anything feels unfair, they're usually cutting corners. One of the most powerful rushes in the game that's the easiest to execute is, is mineral only all-ins, right? Proxy three barracks marine, pull SCVs. It's not hard, right? So you don't even have gas. For Zerg, that's the 12 pool where they start building hatcheries inside your base and outside your base. Why? Because they've just got literally like 14 dudes on minerals and all they're doing is rallying Zerglings across the map. And then there's like a hatch finishes in your base and like Zerglings start popping out in your base and Queens there. This kills Protoss players a lot. It's not as good against Terran, but Terrans will still lose to it. Zanster got GM doing that every game, beating plenty of Terrans in, in high masters and low GM, specifically because they just were amazed at the absolute endless flood of units coming out. It's like, well, yeah, the guy's investing in nothing but slow Zerglings and trying to build spines off it and stuff like... So it's just the same sort of thing where if they do three gate or two gateways and start chronoing zealots and then they also build in cannons with it, well, guess what? They have no core. They have no gas. They're on like 15, 16 probes the entire game. It is the most all-in, zero follow-up sort of build. So it's important for you to put that in a box mentally when you encounter it. You cannot let that affect the rest of your play. And that's kind of what's happened here. So whenever someone does something that feels ridiculously overpowered, unfair, how is this hitting this hard and fast? It's so important you check that replay and understand it, or it's going to like just totally color your, your understanding of everything else. So you freaked out a bit here, missed an SCV. You got multiple SCVs chasing this probe, even though you SCV scouted. And that's like, that's a big problem that should ring alarm bells. Because what did the SCV scout achieve for you? Nothing. Yeah, nothing really. Yeah, it's like, wait a second. We've got three SCVs chasing this probe anyway. Essentially, like this is this is very expensive for us. Our Reaper isn't starting straight away. Why are we building a second depot right now? What's that for? We're not dropping mules. We've got an SCV sitting next to the gas. This I is think the second depot is like... Play. My normal thing, as soon as the command center second CC goes down, my uh, my second depot normally goes down after that. I guess that's not, that's really not a good timing. No, that's really bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, because, well, it, it's fine to do it. Normally, it would go down now. Sorry, your, your Reaper was out when that went down. So this is the normal timing for the depot. It's just you've missed everything else. So that's why this is not. So you're doing it at the normal timing. 
but you've got three SCVs that haven't been mining the whole time. You're not building SCVs and you're not dropping mules. That should be a 21 supply depot. You're on 19 supply and you haven't started even queuing the Marine yet off the barracks. So this is just kind of like the flow on effect of all those other little mistakes, right? Yeah, so, little things adding up. Yeah, and then we're building a bunker. We're still not dropping mules or building SCVs consistently. And it's like, ah, so that is a crazy expensive slowdown on our start for no good reason. But anyway, let's imagine it was a bit more normal. Factory finishes immediately go for the starport. Your factory was obscenely late this game because of all that flow on effect, but that's okay. Um, starport gonna... or refinery? Second gas and then starport. So the, the starport's gotcha. when the factory finishes. The, the gas is as soon as you start the factory. This is all written. I'm writing this here in your build here, so you can read it there as we go. Um, two, so what are we going to go? Lib plus medevac or two times libs? for simplicity's sake, if you want to keep it super simple, right? It's up to you on that one. And then the idea is, okay, well, what do we want to do after that? We can go, are we going to go tanks on the factory? I mean, I like tanks. So yeah, okay, we'll get tanks for safety. We can probably afford tank a tank or two and a lib or two. It's just libs take priority. Libs take priority. And then we can go, oh, okay, if we want to continue the same way you've been playing, third CC, plus the same order you normally do your build in, right? So all we've done is we've squeezed in the second gas and the starport a bit quicker and if a couple libs come out. It's like the most basic thing in the world, but it will actually make sure you're seeing what they're going for and potentially do some big damage to greedy opponents. Um, in terms of your reaper, I don't think this player actually walled off the high ground completely. I'm not sure if you'd even checked it. But if you're going to go for a Reaper, you've got to do something with it. I don't think you ever tried to. You just rallied it to the front. So that's a big thing you can start focusing on as well. So, hey, let's actually either use that Reaper or take it out of the build. I would say use the Reaper. Use sometimes the Reaper. I try it, or sometimes I'll use it around to get a little scouting info. But I think I was, like you said, I'm behind on everything in this game. So I kind of parked it out front like, okay, if he comes out, at least I'll see it. Yeah, and so then it looks like I brought it home. Oh it no, should, that's an it SCV. should pop at one fifty eight. By the way, if you've done it, your build properly, you're three seconds late, which is totally acceptable for your skill level. That's fine. Some pros don't pop out till two hundred one, and you're going to chase the probe. Eh, not the worst thing in the world. That's fine. It's pretty close to your base, but we should be going straight across the map from there. And um, yeah, that's important because if that first stalker comes across, sometimes they'll get there before your bunker finishes but you should be able to kill a few probes in return. It's like the tax if that stalker comes out. But uh, yeah, otherwise you could easily just go Marine first and uh, not use the Reaper. So it's for you. If you want to work on that Reaper micro, go right in and look for damage. Come back in a bit later for a scout would be a good way to do it. Um, or just go Marine into, you know, into reactor slash faster factory, right? if we're not going to use it. So one or the other there, and that's just going to make you build a little bit more focused on what you're actually trying to achieve. And that should be really, really good for you. So um, we're out of time, unfortunately. So I think a little bit more pressure is good. We've talked about a thousand different little areas, right? There's so many different things, but um, make sure you pick the same pressure or uh, sorry, not the same pressure, but some pressure for the other two matchups. You mentioned like Hellions and Hellbats and map out how that changes your build. Now, maybe that's just pick an opening build order off spawning tool or often all things Terran thread or something like that, and then morph it back into that familiar pattern that you're used to, the third CC, getting the barracks up, going for the big bio tank push. Um, but I think that's gonna be a really effective thing for, you know, it, you've got to force yourself to get a bit more active and squeeze some pressure in on your opponents. And don't be afraid to be a bit uh, ambitious, you know, something like a Hellbat pressure versus Zerg. If you can hit like four minutes 40 with like six Hellbats and a bunch of Marines in a medevac or something like that, that's that's an awesome attack. That's a really powerful one. Um, so if you can work one of these attacks in to your early game, and yes, it'll delay your default scouting, right? You're not going to be building tanks as quickly, but you're going to learn how to respond when necessary to certain attacks. And in the meantime, it's just about getting the build down, hitting your sharp attack timing and kind of going with it. And I think that'll pay off huge dividends because it's forcing you to the next experience level of your Terran development. You know, you've been pretty vanilla in terms of build orders, playing one opening, 
but you've gotten pretty good at these pushes and, and building up a big army and, and kind of overwhelming your opponent with macro and then finding your timing. You've done pretty damn well with this. So it's time for us to kind of say, okay, now let's mix opening pressure in. Let's mix in different opening build orders for each matchup to play to the strengths of that matchup, whatever that may be. Um, you know, Hellbats versus Zerg, some Liberator Pressure versus Protoss. Maybe people start playing Phoenix all the time. Liberator Pressure ends up being shit. You, you stop using it. Or you come up with a branch. You say, you know what? I just hide the Liberators on the edge of the map and I wait till the Phoenix are in my base and then I queue it to Siege of Mineral Line where it does a shitload of damage because the Phoenix have to go all the way home or very quickly recall, which most players won't, won't really do that fast. And that can be super duper powerful. It all sounds good, man. So with your attack timing, I notice you... Let's look at your scouting as you move across. Last point, because this is how most Terrans lose the game. You stimmed one Marine ahead, which is great. But I really would have loved us to actually be scanning. You don't actually know where his army is. You have no idea what you're pushing into at this point. So this makes me incredibly uncomfortable. Why don't we have a Marine going up that way to the right? Why don't we have one going that way? We're also putting ourselves in the most flankable position on the map. So arguably if we were going to push this base we should have pushed down from here where it's harder to get flanked or if we were going to push the north maybe push up there it's up to you of course it depends if you feel you've got a strong enough army sometimes you just want the most direct route that is a valid choice but definitely be visualizing your push before you move out where you want to siege up and if you can get some awesome position like hey a few tanks on that high ground up there or something like that absolutely deadly and uh, always be scanning ahead and trying to figure out where the hell their army is and what their army actually looks like. And, you know, if you're going to stim Marines ahead, stim them way forward. You got to find where he is and what he's got. Because sometimes you'll push in and it's like time to just man mode it, which is what you do here. Sieging right pretty close to the base. Other times it's like, oh shit, his army's actually gigantic and I really should not be engaging. To be fair, I kind of think he could have rolled you if he took a decent fight. But he got really disjointed here. I think he had an... If he waited for one more big round, is that, how many gateways does he have? Eight. Your opponent has an obscene economy, by the way. It's like very common. Players just have a, a silly economy. Um, but yeah, if he just pulled back, wait and split his army and came in for like half from there, half from here, I think with one more round of Zealots and his army going in all together, he could have killed you. Yeah, it's the just... first one, if, if I wouldn't have the or split off part of my army to defend the tanks like north, if these zealots would have got in, I think the fight would have gone totally different. Because then yeah. he's got zealots or charge lots on my tanks. Yeah, yeah. So it was like it was a it, what was funny about that, it was it, it was disjointed from him. The rest of his army comes in after they all die, so it was pretty unfortunate for him. But it was a, a very good idea, and you're absolutely right. So it was good planning that you didn't just leave your army out. But uh, it would have been even better if we'd actually seen the army up there with the Marines, seen the army here and kind of scanned ahead. And, you know, information is so important, especially like what, what gives me a pet peeve about not scanning ahead of this army is just that, and like we, can, we can exit out of that replay, you spent the whole game camping and building up to that push essentially. So don't let your 10 minutes of macro go to waste. <laughs> you know, if, if ah, I don't want to use a scan, that's 200 minerals. Trust me, it's worth. You built a sick army there. Take care of that army. Treat it with love and um, <laughs> make yeah, sure those away, units get in the right spot. Throwing away my army a million times by not scanning or like you're saying, sending a unit ahead. Yeah, it feels weird using like you scan, you don't see anything. So you scan the other bit. Where the fuck is his army? What's it look like? What's going on? You know, but it's, it's just so worthwhile. And um, visualizing where you can siege the tanks in a really good spot ahead of time is amazing, right? Like if you saw a giant scary army, you'd do more of what I was talking about with like the tanks up on that high ground ledge and you just kind of like trying to bait him into your tanks because you're like, oh, this, is like, he's got, this guy's got a hundred zealots. I can't like go into the open ground and fight this, but like maybe I can bait him into like kind of half engaging into me a few times because he just cannot get to the siege tanks on the high ground. I'm like, cool, we can take some good fights. Whereas, like, you know, you see someone who's got, like, you know, a few Colossus, but their army's not all together yet. And you're like, oh, okay, let's fucking go. Siege up on the base. Let's go. You know, force the fight now before he reinforces. And that can go really good. But um, either way, I think you should be progressing quite a lot. It's like, it's really a new leaf, though, in your StarCraft journey. So think of this as, like, you're learning a new balancing act from scratch, which is learning how to interact with your opponent a bit more. So you're getting out there with some early harassment. You're trying to make sure your openings are a little bit more solid than that last game. I'm sure that last game was probably right after a cannon rush. And it was, I'm sure you normally 
have a better opening than that game because I think game one we saw a better one even than that even though there was a cannon rush in that game um but yeah I think, yeah those I think, were yeah. back-to-back protoss games <laughs> yes and that that can traumatize a traumatize a man a little bit so get on in there and just play more games make sure if there is stuff that makes you feel like you need to change your build and you're unsafe get your analysis going it's time to ramp up that replay analysis machine and start you know always playing the rewind game end of every game always rewind and go man he just wiped me with like a billion roaches um you know what i think he probably did that since his army was so much bigger he probably only had like 45 drones and you check the replay oh no he had 80 wow i was way behind oh fuck i forgot about those lings that killed my whole natural mineral line in the early game okay yeah of course i was way behind i forgot about that shit you know play that that game with yourself if you can make that a habit that's like the most it's the, the easiest way to get effortless improvement because you just build this habit of every game rewinding and quizzing yourself on one detail like did i think he had three three did i did i have three three when that big fight happened i think my two two maybe wasn't quite done when that big fight happened let's go you know i think it was probably 20 seconds away from finishing you and you don't just quiz yourself and go i wonder let's check you go I'm going to have a firm stance on it. So you're gambling with yourself, right? It's like making a bet with a buddy. You're way more invested and you learn more from the result of it because you've put just a little bit of your your game sense ego on the line. So that's a really cool way of making sure you're developing your game sense over time. Sounds good, man. You gave me a lot of stuff to, uh, to focus on. Uh, the early aggression is something I'm kind of excited to try. Yeah. And, and we got training wheels as well. It's just queuing a libin, easy peasy. <laughs> when you get expert at that you'll you'll would pull it out sometimes and keep it alive for wave two but if not it's no big deal you're still doing a very macro centric build still a very safe build with early tank production i think i think this should be a, a nice uh, stepping stone so good luck with it man thank you sir appreciate the uh, coaching no worries i'll catch you later mate later man